Hi, I'm Bianca Bondi. I am a South African-born artist based in Paris. The work that I'm showing at Casin Sindidar is actually the final chapter of a series on resilience. Uh, Strying in Astral Ponds is actually um, an immersive installation that plays on this idea of the hyper-real within the real. It's, a, it's an installation that is shown in a space that is kind of liminal. You don't know if it's day or night, uh, are we inside, are we outside, it's terrestrial, but it's cosmic. I like this idea of connecting nature um, using real plants, but that have been stabilized, so they're hyper-real. And also this idea of water, water as a source of life, a source of magic, um, the purest form of material that connects us to our heritage, to ourselves, to our being. Say the yellow again, please. Mm -hmm. This one is really nice. Maybe we can do one Maybe the, yeah, one over there, one maybe over the over blue there. there and the yellow there, that could be nice. Okay, no problem. Maybe we can try. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. Thank you. As soon as you open the door to the space, I like this idea that you find yourself in this different world. And on one side you have these scrying bowls and this bench where I would like visitors to be able to sit down. You're welcome to sit on the bench, on the floor, lie down if you feel more comfortable. And within these bowls there are offerings. It's the very beginning of the show, so there are my offerings. There are seashells, bits of flower, flowers, uh, coins, but I invite people to put their offerings in. And this actually goes back to this idea of what was the initial uh, concept of a wishing well. And uh, what happened is our ancestors, when they found a source of water, they would thank the gods for this. And to nowadays, when we see a fountain, we have this tendency to throw in money and ask for more money or ask for love, which is such a pity. So I, I really appreciate this concept of throwing in an offering and instead of asking for something, being grateful and saying thank you for something in return. So that's how, as a visitor, you could also activate this piece. So my work process is quite often site-specific. Um, I often speak of this concept of how in one's personal life we for myself in any case, I have a tendency to want to control things. So I think it's essential that throughout the materials I choose, they show this, this lack of controllability. Um, this, uh, they're often volatile, they change. And most importantly, it's this idea to show us that uh, there's, there's another world within our world. Because I choose materials that either grow crystals or sweat or change, change color. It's this slow process, molecular, um, expression and uh, I mean it doesn't happen straight away and that's really what's important um, and when we see this transformation takes taking place it reminds us that nothing is static everything is is moving and happening and with our eyes we only see what we're able to see but there's so much more uh, so it's a work that actually is meant to be appreciated either as sculptural elements or as um, a meditative space and much like our ancestors, to use this idea, this concept of scrying, it was before the invention of the mirror, and our ancestors would go into nature at night, use the full moon as the reflect, to reflect of water as a reflective surface, and um, uh, see their faces for the first time. And it was a moment of reconnecting to oneself, uh, one's position in, in the world. And uh, it is said that they would use this as um, a way to to turn into a meditative state and connect with their ancestors. Uh, so that is the, that's the concept, and it's actually been documented in Nostradamus's writing, too. And so I thought it was really important in this time of uh, hyper-technology and everything going so fast, just to rhyme, remind people that slowness is, slowness is a form of attentiveness, which is really important as a form of resilience, too.